what drew me to being a firefighter was the public service side of it and helping people at a time of need. The saying is, we run in when everybody's running out. And uh, that is part of the personal drive to want to uh, help the community, uh, help those in need. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of an internal like, thing, I think, with most uh, people that want to be uh, firefighters. It's a career, not necessarily a job. So you have to have this innate feeling of helping others because you may at one point in time in your career or your life um, give it up for somebody else. So that has to be in the forefront of your thoughts and everything else comes second. Every day is a learning, new learning curve. It's working with community, um, learning more about the island, more, learning more about the state, learning more about the resilience of people and how they work things through in a time of critical need and emergency. Becoming a firefighter in Hawaii is extremely uh, interesting because our topography, our weather, our isolation. You have to be an individual within a team and as an individual you have to know as much as they can teach you because all of those things are tools in a toolbox that you have. We have PMRF that has an engine company. Uh, we have uh, the airport that has an engine company but we don't have other full departments that we can call on for media resource. So we kind of have to think a little differently. And a lot of people don't think that Hawaii is dangerous because it's so beautiful and I think that's the reason it is dangerous because we lose ourselves in the beauty and the reason why we live here or visit here. Fire service in Hawaii is a catch-all. We do it all. There's nobody else to call you know unless it's something extremely beyond our capability. We can get support but it comes days later like big wildland fires or brush fires, we have the state come in and we support the state or they support us, but it takes days to get those resources in. Uh, immediately on a fire, we have, to, uh, we have to think there is nobody to support us other than ourselves, so. We work with all of our partners. You know, of course we have ocean safety besides fire in, in the fire department, so our reaction to swift water rescues and those kind of events, we train every day together, so it's, I don't want to say easy, but it makes it seamless. Kauai, we're training our ocean safety lifeguards on the roving patrol. We're getting them up to EMT, emergency medical technician. Their span of control is probably one to 200, 300 people at any one tower. So if something goes down there, they were, would be the first ones. Under the fire department, the last 18 years, our, our training level has become very more high level and, uh, and, and more professional. Planning and training for major disasters is something we do routinely. Um, you know, we say we uh, plan for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, but at a certain level, we just can't plan beyond that. Back in April, we had, you know, that natural disaster and we had a heavy flooding and the bridge was out and flooding was this covered the road. So uh, a few lifeguards and a few firefighters worked hand in hand on pretty much 
evacuating people off houses and uh, rescuing people off people's roofs and, and doing all kinds of pretty you know, dangerous rescues. And, and that shows you what the department does, preparing themselves in all these different types of cross-training. As events escalate and we get multiple events going on that are a major disaster, that's a bad day for me because then I really have to worry about what's the resources available, are our firefighters getting the resources and the support they need to do their job safely. So the example in the April event, we flew helicopters nonstop for four days. That's pretty dangerous. If there's a disaster, um, you're on your own pretty much. You know, uh, hurricanes, tsunamis, whatever, heavy rains, your husband is at work, he's not there, so you gotta figure it out. It's been a good 12 years. I'm ready to move on and let someone else step up and come up with a new vision. Working alongside Chief Westerman has been completely rewarding. In my opinion, Chief Westerman was probably the best supervisor out of all so far that I've been working under the fire department. Uh, not only as a manager or as a fire chief, as, as a friend, uh, as a mentor. He's been a shaker and a mover as a chief. And that's a great example for other chiefs. He's dedicated to leaving it better than he got it. And so I really appreciate that. Uh, we try to emulate that. And it's not about me, it's not about us. It's, a, it's about everyone, the betterment of the department. Babe, we're really proud of you. We love you very much. And I'm so glad that you're going to retire and get busy on that honeydew list now. That house next door needs to get worked on. Okay, love you.